NASA space probe just revealed the dark origin of Jupiter's light. For the first time, the dark side of a hot Jupiter is depicted in detail. Iron clouds, titanium rain, and winds that dwarf Earth's jet stream are probably present on the planet's night side. So what is the dark origin of Jupiter's light? Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we will be taking a look at the dark origin of Jupiter's light. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. We have sent people to the moon, sent unmanned spacecraft to other planets, and shifted our gaze in search of new worlds to galaxies millions of light years away. Insightful observations have always accompanied all of these astronomical achievements, but the universe is still filled with many unanswered questions that serve as a constant reminder that we still have a long way to go before fully comprehending the cosmos. Uncovering Jupiter Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system and the fifth planet from the Sun, is a gas giant with 79 moons and is referred to as the king of the planets. Scientists have historically been taken by surprise by the gas behemoth. Named after a class of gods from Roman mythology, this king of the planets is a tempestuous enigma, veiled in vibrant clouds. The Great Red Spot, which is twice as wide as Earth, is its largest and most recognizable storm. The discovery of Jupiter's four major moons by Galileo in 1610, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto helped redefine how we view the universe and our role within it. These discoveries confirmed the Copernican theory that Earth was not the center of the universe and were the first to show the celestial bodies revolving around something other than Earth. The NASA Juno spacecraft has been studying Jupiter and its moons since 2016. NASA estimates that Jupiter is more than twice as massive as all the other planets combined. The enormous size of Jupiter could accommodate more than 1,300 Earths. Earth would be the size of a grape if Jupiter were the size of a basketball. Because it was created from gas left over from the birth of the Sun, Jupiter was likely the first planet to form in the solar system. NASA claims that if the planet had been around 80 times more massive during its formation, it would have evolved into a star in its own right. Jupiter orbits the Sun at a distance of approximately 483,682,810 miles. This distance from the Sun is 5.203 times greater than the standard Earth-Sun distance. When Jupiter is at perihelion, it is just 460,276,100 miles from the Sun. Its distance from the Sun at aphelion, or its furthest point from it, is 507,089,500 miles. Jupiter's atmosphere, which is primarily formed of hydrogen and helium, is similar to that of the Sun. At the center of the planet, a fuzzy or partially dissolved core is encased in a fluid metallic hydrogen layer rich in helium. Strong east-west winds that are traveling more than 335 miles per hour in the planet's upper atmosphere are what cause the bright and black bands that surround Jupiter. Ammonia crystals that have been frozen form the white clouds in the light zones, while other chemicals are responsible for the darker clouds in the dark belts. Blue clouds can be seen at the lowest observable levels. The stripes of clouds are dynamic, far from static. According to researchers at the University of Colorado in Boulder, Jupiter's enormous magnetic field is the strongest of all the planets in the solar system, being about 20,000 times stronger than that of the Earth. The planet's moons and rings frequently experience radiation levels more than 1,000 times higher than those that are harmful to humans due to the magnetic field's extreme trapping of electrons and other electrically charged particles. Even heavily insulated spacecraft, such as NASA's Galileo probe, can be harmed by the radiation. A tail of more than 600 million miles in length extends from Jupiter's huge magnetosphere, which expands out to a distance of between 600,000 and 2 million miles from the Sun. On August 27, 2016, the Juno spacecraft's Star Tracker camera got this image of Jupiter's flimsy rings as it made the first data-gathering close approach to the giant planet. It is the first time the planet's rings have ever been seen from within them. Orion's belt may be seen in the lower right, while Betelgeuse, a brilliant star, can be seen above the main ring. The Great Red Spot, a massive hurricane-like storm that has lasted more than 300 years, is one of Jupiter's most recognizable characteristics. NASA estimates that the Great Red Spot is roughly twice the size of Earth at its widest point, and that its edge revolves between 270 and 425 miles per hour counterclockwise around its center. It is referred to as an anticyclone because of its counterclockwise rotation. 
Small concentrations of sulfur and phosphorus in the ammonia crystals in Jupiter's clouds may account for the storm's color, which typically ranges from brick red to slightly brown. Although the rate may have slowed recently, the spot has been becoming smaller for a while. There are a lot more storms on Jupiter. According to Juno data from 2022, Jupiter's enormous polar cyclones are propelled by convection, or heat rising from lower altitudes to the higher atmosphere, much like how ocean vortexes on Earth function. So what is the dark origin of Jupiter's light? The origin of the Jovian polar light displays is being illuminated by the gas giant orbiter, the development of auroral dawn storms, the early morning brightening particular to Jupiter's stunning aurorae is now known for the first time according to new findings from the ultraviolet spectrograph instrument on NASA's Juno mission. These enormous fleeting light shows, which take place at both Jovian poles, were previously only seen by observatories on the ground and in Earth orbit, most notably NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. The journal AGU Advances published the study's findings on March 16th. Dawn storms are brief, but strong brightening and broadening of Jupiter's primary auroral oval, an oblong curtain of light that surrounds both poles, close to where the atmosphere emerges from darkness in the early morning region. They were first spotted by Hubble's faint object camera in 1994. Prior to Juno, investigations of the Jovian ultraviolet aurora had only provided side views, concealing everything occurring on the planet's night side. The night side of Jupiter's poles cannot be seen when observing the aurora on Earth because of the limb in between. Voyager, Galileo, and Cassini were among the spacecraft that undertook explorations, but they did so from relatively great distances and did not cross the polar regions, so they were unable to see the entire picture, according to study lead author Bertrand Bonfond of the University of Liège in Belgium. The Juno data is a major game changer because it gives us a greater picture of what is going on at night where dawn storms are born. Researchers reveal dawn storms are born on the night side of the gas giant. As the planet spins, the soon-to-be dawn storm rotates with it towards the day side, where these intricate and very bright auroral features grow even more luminous, spewing anywhere from hundreds to thousands of gigawatts of ultraviolet light into space. The increase in brightness suggests that dawn storms are injecting at least 10 times as much energy as ordinary aurora into Jupiter's upper atmosphere. Zhang Hua Yao, a co-author of the study from the University of Liege, stated, when we looked at the entire dawn storm sequence, we couldn't help but notice that they are quite similar to a sort of terrestrial aurora called substorms. These new discoveries will enable researchers to examine the differences and commonalities that affect aurora formation in order to gain a better understanding of how these most beautiful of planetary phenomena occur on planets both within and outside of our solar system. Jupiter has an incredible amount of power. Another demonstration of the might of this enormous planet is the intensity in these dawn aurorae, according to Scott Bolton, Juno's principal investigator at the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio. The Juno mission, which is continuously rewriting the book on how big planets operate, is responsible for the morning storm disclosures, which are yet another surprise. With NASA's most recent mission extension, we anticipate learning many more new things. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time.